Got copper pipes? Convert them to PEX, because PEX is way easier to work with. Stick around for all the tips and tricks. First thing we need to do is cut the pipe cleanly. So the most obvious answer is gonna be a pipe cutter. They come in all kinds of sizes, and unless you have like a stud right up against your pipe, this is gonna be your easiest bet. You could also cut it with a Dremel tool with a disc on it, or you can get an angle grinder in there, depending on how much space you have. So I'm gonna use this trusty cutter here. So you can see you just twist it in and out. Put it on there and then twist it down. So enough that it's tight and then spin it. And then when it starts to feel loose, you'll tighten it again. You go around, feels loose, tighten it again. You can see it cutting the notch. Feels loose, tighten it again. You'll see it cutting almost all the way through now. There we go. Nice clean cut. Now you will notice we have a little bit of a rough edge here on the inside and the outside. We're gonna wanna clean that up. So the easiest way to do that is you can get this inside outside cutter. So you can see the blades, how they're shaped like that. This would be for the inside. So just twisting it like this to get rid of the burrs on the inside of the pipe. So that way it eliminates any chance there's gonna be turbulence, which could create pinhole leaks down the line. So this is one option. They come in all kinds of sizes. This one's for smaller pipes. You could also deep burr with just a razor blade. Just get it in there. and spin it. But do not skip this step. You do not want burrs inside your pipes. Next, you wanna make sure you have the right adapter. So this is a half inch copper going to a three quarter inch PEX. And if you stick this on the copper line, you can see that the half inch copper goes nicely into three quarter PEX. You wouldn't want to downsize half inch copper to half inch PEX. That's gonna downsize your line significantly. So if you want a straight up equivalent, half inch copper to three quarter pecs. Obviously if you're just going to a one off line or something, maybe you can actually just go to half inch pecs. But if you want the same diameter line, you're gonna wanna go to three quarter pecs. And remember there are two kinds of pecs. This is pecs B. It has the multiple ribs here. You'll see pecs A usually has just one or two ribs and those fittings are expanded and then put on here and then they shrink. With the PEX B, there are rings that go on here and then you crimp the rings. So make sure you're getting the right PEX adapters and whatever fittings you need for your A or B system. And make sure you check out my video on straight versus angled PEX B crimpers. That'll show you everything you need to know about which one to choose. Now we're gonna talk about surface prep for your fittings and for the actual copper. You wanna make sure both sides are really, really clean. So you can get a brush to go inside the fitting. And if you're doing a lot of these, you can actually cut this off right here and stick it inside your drill. And that will make it super easy if you're doing a ton of things. But I just still have it on the handle here. So you're just gonna go in here and really get the inside of this fitting nice and clean. Now what you're doing here is you're getting the surface really clean, but you're also creating tons of little grooves for the solder to get in. So this makes it a really strong connection when you have this nice and roughed up because the solder gets all in these little grooves and, and scratches. All right, now for the pipe side, they sell a ton of different sandpapers that are just basically on a little roll here. So you can get that, you can just get a piece of sandpaper. I like these because you can kind of go back and forth real easily. So I'll just rip off a tiny bit here. And then I'm actually gonna stick this in my vise. So just get your piece of sandpaper here and really get the edges nice and shiny clean. Probably could have used a little longer length to make it easier on myself. 
Again, we're creating all kinds of little scratches for the solder to get in. At the end. You want it to be all shiny. And then you want to do your best not to touch this after you sand it with your fingers because the oils on your fingers are going to make it a little bit harder for the solder to catch. So just get a paper towel, wipe off the dust. All right, let's talk about heat. You'll need some sort of torch to get it hot enough. You can get flame sizes, you know, some are pencil flames, some are a little bigger. This one's a little bigger, but you want something that's going to be able to get hot enough, um, but also not melts everything around the area. So we got to prevent that by either a fire resistant cloth that you can hang up either next to the pipes, but um, some tacks in the wall or some screws in the wall to hold this up. So this is one option is the flame retardant material. They also have heat sink putty, which basically you put this around the pipe and anything downstream of that will not get hot. So if you have either other fittings that you don't want to get unsoldered or maybe a shark bite, but you probably shouldn't have a shark bite, but that's on you. Uh, basically anything downstream of where this is will not get hot enough to melt. You could also use a license plate or even a trowel to keep the heat from going past this. But bottom line, don't burn the studs behind the pipe. Just get something to protect them. Now for the flux. You're going to want lead-free flux for any kind of potable water applications, any kind of pipes in your house. And I really like the tinning flux. This is the number 95 by Odie. And I like this because the tinning flux actually has solder flakes in it. So that's kind of another added insurance there to kind of extra coverage. So lead-free tinning flux is what you want. And you'll also need a little brush to actually apply the solder to the pipe and the fitting. I also want to mention that you cannot solder a pipe that has water in it. So even if it's a little drip, that water is going to turn to steam and carry the heat off faster than the torch can actually heat the pipe. There's a trick you can do by wadding off a piece of bread, putting it in the pipe, and then that'll keep the drip from going to your solder joint. And then before you flush the pipe, after you got it done, you need to remove your filters and screens from your faucets. And that'll keep the breath from clogging up all your faucets and stuff. So make sure you do that before you flush the pipe because it'll clog up everything. I'm going to use the heat sink putty for this application. Remember, if you have any kind of other fittings that you don't want to unsolder downstream of this fitting, you want to put this as a thermal break. And depending on how hot you're getting, the more you want to use. And it does say in the directions to put it on pretty forcefully. So make sure it's really mushed on there. There's actually a goop that you can put on here too, but that does get pretty messy. This is pretty clean. It stays on there pretty tight. And then once it's done, you can actually put this back in the container and reuse it. All right, now we're going to add the flux. Remember, this is number 95 OD lead-free tinning flux. And remember, when you're dealing with your brush here, you don't want to set it down in dirt. Make sure it stays clean because any of that dirt is going to keep the solder from actually running like it's supposed to in the joint. So keep your brush clean, keep your flux clean, and you'll have a better time. So here's what it looks like. Just grab a little bit here on the pipe. Like I said, this is tinning flux, so it does have little bits of solder actually built into it. And we want to try to stay kind of where the fitting is going to be. You don't want to go too far past that because that will give you a messy joint. And we don't want to put too much extra flux on there either. And then I'll put some in the joint here. Put it on. 
And you can see here I went a little farther than I wanted to with my flux. So I want to clean that off because if I leave that on there, that solder is going to want to take that. And it's going to leave you kind of a messy solder joint. So just grab a clean paper towel and wipe off your extra flux. Same principle applies to the actual solder. You want lead free for potable water. And when you're heating the joint, always have your flame opposite of where your solder is going in and it'll draw it to the other side. And you'll be able to see when the joint is filled, it'll start to fill all the way around. And obviously if you're against a stud or something, you can get a mirror to kind of look on the other side to see if your solder is filled on that side. But we have full clearance here, so we should be able to see it. And if your solder comes on a roll, you're gonna to wanna to unroll it and create a little bit of a curve. That just makes it easier to kind of get in there if it's kind of straight. So you wanna heat the pipe first, and then when it starts to get hot, you'll be able to kind of touch the solder and see if it starts to take. If it doesn't take, it'll just sit there. But as soon as it starts wicking, you've got it hot enough. It's not hot enough yet. There you go, see it taking. You can see the sour joint fill up. You see at the bottom there, put a little too much. So it created kind of a, a little drip there. You can just take your flux. Clean that up with your flux brush. The worst thing you can do is take a wet rag and put it on here when it's hot because that could fracture the solder. So just let it cool down naturally. There you go. And then you want to check all the way around so make sure you see solder. Now this is going to take some time to figure out how much solder you're going to need. So obviously you don't want to be putting too much in to the point where it's getting mounted up and bunched up inside the actual fitting. So you'll see it a little bit come out here first. And that's definitely your sign that you don't want to put any more in. So you'll see kind of it bubble up all the way around and then you're good to go. And like I said, this putty is actually reusable. So you can just take it off the pipe and just put it back in the container. I'll leave a link for all these things in the description. All right, here we have it, the finished solder fitting. This is ready to go to the packs. I got my ring here. This was going here. Again, this is half inch copper to three quarter packs if you want an equal ratio. If you're looking to downsize, then you can go to half inch here. But if you want the equivalent half inch copper to three quarter packs, it's going to give you even flow rates. And then you would crimp this and good to go to PEX. And obviously PEX is awesome because you can bend it and stretch it. And it's just way easier to work with than copper. So, not knocking copper. If you have it, use it. But if you're looking to repipe your house, say from galvanized, or you have just a little bit of copper, I would definitely go to PEX. So the major takeaways, make sure you protect your area from heat with either a cloth or a trowel or some other kind of heat putty. Make sure you clean your fittings appropriately. Make sure you use lead-free solder and flux if you're using it on potable water sources and make sure there's no water in the pipe because you're not gonna be able to get the pipe hot enough. All right, I'm gonna leave a link for all this stuff in the description and let me know if you have any other questions. See you next time.